Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech in 3. I'm going to talk to you today about SIP trunks, but more importantly we're going to look at what they are and how they work. Before we do that, I think it's better that we look at how a current traditional phone call works and that way it will give you greater understanding of how SIP can enhance what you currently have. So, first things first, imagine you're making a call like you would do in a normal way. You dial your number, you come through to what's called a PBX. Now a PBX to your eye is a traditional phone system. Most businesses have them on site and what they do is they look after your call traffic. So the call goes through, it again goes along the lines and then gets delivered to your traditional phone line. Well, as you've been going along this line, it's gone through the normal telephone exchange and the local green cabinet as it would always do. Now the line that it's used along the way there is called an ISDN line or a copper analog line. The ISDN line is one that allows you to carry multiple channels of calls at any one time. So for instance, that could have a capacity of 30 calls, both internal and external. Imagine that's reached its capacity and this system that you had, you've not had it that long, you're not gonna be in a rush to rip it out because of the cost. So what they do is you can add on SIP trunks, which rather than go through a traditional phone line, these will carry your calls over your data or your internet connection. So as you would do normally, you make your call, it goes through the PBX. At this stage on your PBX, say it has reached its capacity. If you've got the SIP function on there, this is an extension for you. So this would take the call from the SIP trunk, it comes through to your service provider. And then from your service provider, we deliver the call to the person you've been calling. Now this is an extension of your current system and the normal call charges apply but say you're calling somebody in your own company and they're also using SIP, but they're based in another location. What you would do, you make that call, it goes through the PBX as we've mentioned, goes through your SIP trunk and comes through to your service provider. And at this stage, they recognize that that call that you're making is going to another SIP user. They would then take the call, deliver it to their SIP, and then from their SIP, it goes through the PBX and we deliver that call there. Now imagine you're making a call to somebody who's using not SIP, but they're using VoIP, which would be a fully hosted solution. What you would do, you would make that call, go through the PBX, it comes through your SIP, it then goes onto your service provider, but this time it goes to the router that they have on their site. From that router, it then gets delivered. Now the good part here about charges is you've got a couple of options here which could potentially save you money. With this option, if it's gone through SIP, if it's in the same company and you're using the same service provider, that will what they call on-net call charging. If it's not, it would be off-net call charging, your standard rate supply. In this side of it, same applies. If they're using a different service provider, then it's potentially gonna be more expensive than it would be for charging, calling somebody who's on your current service provider. I hope that's been able to give you a bit more clarity to sit trunking and I do hope you'll join us for the next episode of Tech in 3.